Tibetan refugees have been living in India for over five decades and for the first time the community has been given the chance to vote in the country's huge general election. Yet there seems to be little enthusiasm to participate in the electoral process. Uh, the Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama and his followers fled to India in 1959 following a rebellion against Chinese rule. Uh, Tibetans have continued to cross the border into India ever since. Well, today, close to 100,000 Tibetans live in India. They're mainly concentrated in the states of Himachal Pradesh in the north, uh, Karnataka in the south, and in the capital, Delhi. Well, the Tibetan government in exile functions from Dharamsala in Himachal Pradesh. The town has about 14,000 Tibetans living there, but only 217 are registered to vote. Well, we've done a lot here on Global about the sheer size of the Indian election, uh, but now we're going to concentrate on uh, the fact that it, this is very small, with only this couple of hundred people have been uh, able, uh, have, have registered to vote. We can speak now to the Tibetan poet and activist uh, Tenzil Sundu, who is joining us uh, from Dharamsala. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, why don't you want to vote? Um, I went to uh, the polling booth today and uh, I went there to see uh, if there were any other Tibetans voting. And I saw a couple of Tibetans, but it's a uh, far less number compared to the large majority of almost about 14,000 Tibetans living here in Dharamshala. There were about, uh, uh, about 200 people who were voting. But, but what is the resistance? Why, do, why wouldn't you want to have your voice heard? Well, uh, for for the Tibetans, firstly, we are grateful to the government and the people of India for the shelter, for the refuge, and also the freedom to grow and nurture our own sense of democracy. For for all Tibetans, it is a deep nurtured dream uh, for us to return return to a free and independent Tibet. For that, we need to remain as Tibetans. That's the main reason why Tibetans did not go to register uh, as a voter and also get the facility. And we, can, we think that it is very magnanimous gesture on part of India to give this facility to the Tibetan refugees who have been living in India, in India for the past 55 years. Yeah, very interesting. Is there... Is there kind of almost pressure on the Tibetans? I mean, you know, we've talked about 214 having registered to vote. Has there been pressure on them not to vote? No, uh, both uh, the Tibetan government in exile as well as the Indian government, they said uh, it is a free and democratic right of any Tibetan or for that matter, any person born in India before 1987 to be able to take this, take, take this facility. And a Tibetan like me, born in India and raised here, I have full right to go and vote and b therefore become a citizen of India. But most Tibetans do not want to do that. They, for them, r uh, the dream of going back to our own country one day is much more precious than taking uh, this kind of right. But then there are a few who want to take that pragmatic step and uh, be the citizen of India and they yet feel for Tibet. But I don't, what I don't get is why does it undermine your campaign for a free Tibet to vote in the Indian election when that gives you at least some voice in a democracy across the border from where you would rather be? Well, the basic uh, um, uh, reason why, for example, me and a number of other Tibetans is it undermines their nationality. We are Tibetans and we have a legal, historical and moral rights over, the, over Tibet, the country which is under Chinese occupation. And when we change our nationality, the basic moral and legal authority of claim over Tibet loses. So this is the main reason why people do not want to. Uh, and therefore, tomorrow when Tibet is independent, we want to go back to our own country as a Tibetan. At that time, so, uh, the, the more pragmatic Tibetans who have taken Indian citizen might have to then relinquish that and then uh, change over back to Tibetan citizenship. OK, Tenzin Sundu. Thank you very much indeed. Very interesting to uh, talk to you there in Dharamsala. Thank you very much indeed.